Welcome everyone. We are going to get started here. Thank you all for joining us tonight for our uh, virtual information session about our surgical technology program here at Nebraska Methodist College. All right, so we have a few different presenters this evening that are going to be joining us. My name is Megan Kokenge. I'm the Director of Enrollment Services here at the college, and I'll be chatting with you tonight about a, um, a few different topics, uh, mainly scholarships, and then I'll also be kind of working on um, the backside of things, moderating things. Um, and then I'll let our other two speakers introduce themselves as well. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Oops, sorry. Uh, Sorry, Janet. Sure. Um, my name is Sydney Payton. I'm the recruitment and admissions coordinator. So I work with you all the way from giving you general information about the program to walking you along the application process and then getting you um, accepted to the program as well. And hello, everyone. Thanks for being with us tonight. My name is Janet McAdams, and I am the program director for the surgical, surgical technology program. I have been a certified uh, surgical technologist for uh, 24 years now, and I'm going to talk to you about what it is to be a surgical technologist, how long our program is, and what can you do after graduation. All right, wonderful. Thank you. All right, so before we get started, we just we briefly just chatted with you about um, some of the topics we're going to chat with you about. This presentation will probably last just under an hour. It is being recorded. Um, all of our participants are in listen only mode, so we ask that you participate with us via either the Q&A button or the chat feature that is in your toolbar. And your toolbar is probably located either across the top or the bottom of your screen. And then lastly, we do have a few attendee polls that um, we would like our participants to um, take part in so we can just learn a little bit more about who is in the room this evening. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and launch some of our polls. All right, so the first poll that we, um, question that we are interested in learning is, when are you potentially interested in starting a surge tech program? So this program starts once a year, it starts each fall. So our next cohort will start in fall of 2022. And I know sometimes we have some students who are super eager to, so. All right, so it looks like everybody in the room this evening is interested in learning about our fall 2022 start date. That is great. We'll make sure and share all of the relevant, relevant dates and things to know for that. All right, so our next question is, what is your current level of education? So we have students come to us with a variety of backgrounds. So this is always really good for us to know so we can kind of gauge um, how best to answer your questions um, regarding the application process, transfer credit, that sort of thing. All right, so it looks like we have some students in the room that have an associate degree and we have some that already have a bachelor's degree. So that is great to know. We'll make sure that we definitely talk about the transfer credit process tonight. All right, and our last question is, how did you hear about Nebraska Methodist College? Great. Well, this is great. It looks like everybody in the room heard about us through a friend or family member. That is awesome. One of our um, number one um, ways that we attract students is through referrals. So we're always happy to hear that people had a good experience or have good things to say. All right. Wonderful. Well, we will go ahead and kick things off. I'm going to hand um, things over to Sydney and she's going to share a little bit of information about our college. Okay, so just a general overview of Nebraska Methodist College. We are pretty small, but we offer a lot of areas of study. We have over 40 areas of study for students, including nurse, nursing, allied health professions, which does include surgical technology, and then healthcare management. And those range from anything from certificates all the way up to um, doctorate level. And then we have over 130 years in education, 
We started in 1891, and we are the longest continu- continually running healthcare college in the state. So that's really good. Um, all we do is healthcare, and we've become really good at it. We are pretty small. We have a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and that can definitely get a little bit smaller when you get down to your clinical sites. So you'll never be lost in the crowd. Your professors and the faculty will know you by name. So if you do want to be just a number, uh, Nebraska Methodist is not the place for you. Everyone's going to know you. And we're kind of like a little family in a community around here. We do try to be really upfront with our pricing and our tuition. Although we're a private college, we are a not-for-profit college too. So we try to keep costs as low as possible. We do try to make it affordable for students to come here. You won't pay an application fee when you go to apply. So that's awesome. You can send in your application. And then really the only fee that you'll have at um, that beginning stage is paying to send in your college transcripts. Usually there is a small fee with that. And then we have over, or a little bit over 1,200 students currently enrolled. That number can fluctuate depending on the year. Um, For your application, we do not require ACT test scores. You can definitely send in your ACT score if you would like. Um, There is a scholarship that requires it, but you definitely don't have to send it in. We do give all students on campus iPads. So when you come here, you will get an iPad when you are enrolled and you can use that in your classes. Lots of students use them to write on PowerPoints and take notes. They're really handy for studying. And they're also used in the classroom sometimes too. We are directly affiliated with the Methodist Health System. So we have Methodist Hospital directly across Dodge. We're pretty close by. Being directly tied to them also gives us a ton of different clinical opportunities that Janet will tell you, Janet will tell you about in a little bit. And um, surge texts are really in demand too in the area. That 96% higher rate that you see is actually a lot higher in surge tech. It's pretty much 100%. And so now Janet's going to tell you a little bit about the program and run over clinical and just the curriculum. Okay, so yes, Sydney was correct in the um, higher rate right now. The last several years, we have been at 100% um, hiring for uh, once students have graduated and or upon graduation. And most of our students actually have jobs waiting for them as soon as they graduate. So what is a surgical tech? Uh, Surgical tech, I like to say, is about as close as you could possibly get to being a surgeon without having to go to school to be a surgeon. We are right there, right up next to the surgery. We are handing instruments, we're holding retractors, we're cutting suture. And through our school, we will teach you all the things that you need to know about how to get to this point. We work in the OR as a team. So we work with the surgeon, the circulating nurse, and anesthesia provider. And we are there to not only set up the room for the surgery, and that means gathering instrumentation and equipment and other supplies that we might need, but we prepare the OR. So we open all of our sterile supplies and we set up all of our instruments. We help that surgeon get gowned and gloved when they come in because we are gowned and gloved as well and we are there handing the instruments from start to finish. So we play a big part in the surgery process. With our program, we run a 22 month program and that means you are in school for five consecutive semesters. We start as a group and we're called a cohort and we do that in August. We start in August of every year and then you will run four or five semesters of school. During your time at Nebraska Methodist College, we have a heavy program in hands-on activities. So you spend two semesters in the lab where we teach you everything you need to know about how to walk into an OR and not feel completely lost. We will teach you how to wash your hands the right way, how to put on a 
gown and gloves in a sterile fashion, which we call aseptic technique. We teach you hundreds of instruments over two semesters. So we give you a, a really good solid foundation to set you up for success for clinical. When you go to clinical, that's your second year of the program. So that's the very next fall of the program. And you will have an opportunity to go to a minimum of four clinical sites over two semesters. We try to get students to as many sites as we can. And you spend at least 768 hours in an actual operating room assisting with surgeries and with your OR team. We like to get you as much experience as you possibly can when you are going through your clinicals to set you up for success upon graduation. What are my work options after graduation? And these are just a few. Uh, most people think about a surgical tech working in a main hospital in an operating room. You can also work in what we call outpatient surgery. Outpatient, outpatient surgery are your freestanding surgery centers. They can be tied to a hospital or they completely can be completely separate. Uh, you can work for specialized surgery centers where you only do specific things like maybe orthopedic surgery or you might do plastic surgery. You can be a private scrub. Once you have experience and you've worked as a surgical technologist, you might be hired on by one surgeon to follow them around from hospital to hospital and just do their cases and work specifically with them. There are also opportunities in the organ recovery service. So our Nebraska organ uh, donation uh, here and you can do traveling surgical technology as well. Traveling surgical techs come after a couple of years of experience, but it offers you an opportunity to see the country and you can have surgical rotations or contracts as little as three months to six months to just shy of one year. A couple of things that aren't on here after graduation, you can also pursue your education if you wish. You can get into sales. A lot of surgical techs, as they progress through their career, will get into working as a sales rep for medical supplies. And some continue on to be physician's assistants or like myself, will move into education. So we're gonna walk through um, kind of what the application process looks like. So our application process begins with just filling out our undergraduate application. That link is really easy to find on our website. It's up in the top right corner, it just says apply now. If I have been in contact with you by email, that link's also going to be in the email too. And then we do ask all applicants to write a personal statement and that's pretty easy. It's just a few questions asking you why you're interested in the program and telling us um, how, what your communication style is, some pretty general questions. And we just always recommend students to have someone look that over just to make sure that there is no misspellings or grammatical errors. The next thing we'll have you do is the program and career awareness questionnaire. We did switch um, application sites. So that's actually now just part of the undergraduate application. You will just answer true, false, and yes or no questions, um, certifying that you can lift 50 pounds and that you're comfortable standing um, eight to 10 hours for clinical. So that's pretty simple. Um, the next thing we will need is an official high school transcript. High schools still like to mail those. So I do in all the, um, the emails to you put in that address to have them send the, those to. And then if they do email them, um, I put that email in there as well. It's just admissions at methodistcollege.edu. If you didn't graduate high school, but you got your GED, we can accept those as well. And then the last thing we would need is official transcripts from any colleges that you have attended. What we do, if you don't remember everywhere that you had college credit for, especially those classes way back in high school that you might have taken, we run what's called a clearinghouse report. So I can help you out and let you know what colleges you have attended. 
For our application criteria, generally what we look for is a minimum cumulative GPA of a 2.5. And then um, we look for that high school transcript, so just a high school record or a college academic record. We do look for success in math and science coursework that you have done. If you are a first time student coming right out of high school, we will take any math or science courses that you took during that time. If you're a transfer student and you have over 12 college credits, we will go off the math and science that you've taken in college. And when we look at those, we do try to um, have a 2.5 in just those classes too. We do have um, the fulfillment of technical standards. You can find that on our website on the program page. And then, as I said before, we do not require ACT test scores for the fall of 22 applications, but you can definitely send them in if you would like to. For um, our applications for the Search Check program, we have what's called a rolling application cycle. So we do accept students year round. Uh, for the fall of 22, we can accept students um, pretty close to the start of the semester up to a few weeks before, but I definitely do recommend having your application in a lot sooner than that. We do have a few scholarship deadlines that are way before that time, and then we can fill up. Oh, we can take about 19 students for this program, so the earlier, the better to get you accepted. And with that rolling deadline, it's really nice because... I don't wait until the deadlines to accept students. As soon as you have a completed file in and we have everything done, I'll compile that and send it off to the admissions committee. You can hear back within a few days to about a week. Um, I already have students who have been accepted for the this coming fall. And then I will do an, an unofficial transfer credit review if you'd like me to. If you send me unofficial transcripts, uh, we do use transferology as well. To stand out as a strong applicant, um, I recommend having someone proofread your written statement that can be a close friend or a family member. If you communicate with me by phone or email, which I definitely recommend, um, just make sure you're being professional um, and communicating promptly, answering voicemails, stuff like that. Familiar, familiarize yourself with admissions requirements in the college. The easiest way to do that is just to um, read any of the emails that I send you. Definitely check out our website. We have a ton of resources there and we do have a YouTube page as well. If you are in high school, make sure you take advantage of the math and science courses that you are offered. And if they are offered as college credit, you can ask me if they might transfer in and then I'd recommend those too. Um, it will help you with the application process and getting accepted into the program. Make sure you're turning in your materials on time. Um, submit the FAFSA as early as you can. And then I recommend having everything in by December 6th. That's what's called our priority deadline. And then if you don't quite get everything in by then, February 1st is that next bid big deadline to look out for. If you're a transfer student, which most of our students are, in order to transfer in courses, they do have to be part of an official transcript and the institution also has to be accredited. You do have to earn a grade of a C minus or better. And then we also compare the curriculum um, here to the curriculum that that wherever that course was taken from. After you are accepted and deposited into the program, you will receive an official transcript evaluation and that's when you know which courses you've taken will transfer into our program here. We do have transfer guides on the website where you can put in courses that you've taken from different colleges and see if we have taken them before, so that's very helpful. Transferology is a very similar concept um, and then, as I said, I can always do an unofficial review for you, too. Megan's going to talk um, to you a little bit about different scholarship opportunities that we have. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sydney. So I'm going to walk you through the different scholarship opportunities that are available to our Surge Tech students. So the first bucket of scholarships we're going to chat about is our Upfront Merit Scholarships. So these scholarships are based off your cumulative GPA. 
They do not require that you fill out um, an app, a scholarship application. Um, we do require that students have a FAFSA on file um, before the start of classes. So not on file and um, prior to um, receiving the scholarship, but um, in order for it to be um, assigned to your account, we ask that students. So for our search tech students, that deadline is June 1st. Um, the scholarship, as I mentioned, is awarded at the time of acceptance. So when students are reviewed for admission to the program, they're also going to be reviewed for an up upfront merit scholarship. And the other nice thing is this award is stackable with some with our other academic and leadership scholarships that we're going to chat about. So this is um, the upfront merit scholarship tiers for high school students. So it's based off your cumulative high school GPA if you're just coming out of high school. And as you can see, it ranges from $2,500 to $4,500. Um, and as I said, when you are admitted to the college, we also review you for the scholarship. And then we would let you know at the time of admission also which upfront merit scholarship you um, qualified for. For our transfer students, and it looked like we had quite a few transfer students on the call, um, it is based off your cumulative college GPA. Um, and it's, we would, so we would look at all of your colleges attended and um, calculate a cumulative GPA. And then this um, award would be per year. Um, another scholarship that is available to our Surge Tech students, which is, is called the Nebraska Career Scholarship. And this is a scholarship that um, we have in cl collaboration with the Nebraska uh, Department of Economic Development. The scholarship can range up to $10,000 and it is renewable and transfer students and first time students are eligible for this award. There is an application required. Um, that application is open and listed on our website. Um, this is the one scholarship that Sydney briefly mentioned that does require an ACT score. So when the state established this scholarship, they did um, also list that a ACT score of an 18 be on file. So this would be the one scholarship that we have that um, a student must have a, a ACT on file to be reviewed. So um, if you need help or haven't maybe taken your ACT in a while, um, we're happy to guide you through that process to get in touch with ACT to um, get your score submitted to us. Um, and then lastly, this scholarship also does require that you have a FAFSA on file um, by February 1st in order to be reviewed for it. So so the um, application and the FAFSA and the ACT score should all be submitted by February 1st. You should also have a submitted appli um, admissions application by February 1st. So um, as Sydney mentioned, um, we do run on a rolling admission deadline. However, um, we do encourage students to pay attention to the scholarship deadline so that they can make sure that their application materials and their scholarship materials are all received in time. So some additional scholarship opportunities that we have are the um, NMC Legacy Grant. So this is a $2,000 one-time award for anybody who has a sibling or a parent who is a graduate of NMC, or if you yourself are a graduate of NMC, you would be eligible for this oh, um, one-time award. Um, the United Methodist Church Scholarship. This is a $1,000 one-time award for UMC congregation members. We are loosely affiliated with United Methodist Church. Um, we also have a one-time $1,000 scholarship for Phi Theta Kappa scholar, um, initiated members. So Phi Theta Kappa, also known as PTK, is an academic honorary that's routinely found at community colleges. So if you were an initiated member of that organization, you'd be eligible for a $1,000 one-time scholarship. And finally, we are um, also proud sponsors of HOSA, which is the Health Occupation Student Association. Um, that organization is a high school organization for students who are interested in pursuing healthcare as a career. And if you were an active member of that organization in high school, you are eligible for a $1,000 one-time scholarship. So all of these scholarships, you would work with your admissions coordinator, which is Sydney, to verify. And then we would also award these at the time of admission to your um, scholarship record. All right, so cost and financial aid. So just a few things about the cost associated with our surgical technology program here at Nebraska Methodist College. So the first thing I always like to point out is that this um, program is actually offered at a reduced rate compared to our other programs here at the college. So the um, college, as well as the Methodist Health System, have acknowledged that there is a definite need for more surge techs in our community. And in order to help hopefully meet that need, we have lowered the price 
of this program. So it is $230 per credit hour. Um, the average cost for books is $1,300 per year. So the estimated tuition for um, a year is $7,000. Um, there are some associated fees with this program. So students are required to pay a $25 student activity fee per semester, a $60 health fee per semester, and that gives you access to our campus health office and our physician assistants that's on staff as well. Um, there is a $200, $200 excuse me, technology fee per semester, and it's actually $100 in the summer. So it's $200 in spring and fall and $100 over the summer. And then all of our majors are required um, to pay a one-time background check of $60 and drug screen of $30. These are fees that are associated with um, going into clinical. So all of our students before they go to clinical must have a background check and a drug screen. Regarding financial aid, we do encourage students to fill out the FAFSA, which is the federal application for federal student aid. And this is how you would be, um, uh, be deemed if you're eligible for um, need-based aid. So those scholarships that we chatted about earlier are merit-based scholarships. The FAFSA is how we would determine any need-based aid that you might qualify for. Um, NMC's code, so when you go and fill out that FAFSA, they're going to ask you to determine um, which schools you would like to send your FAFSA information to, and we just always want to make sure that you do send that to us if you're interested in coming here, so that way we can get your information. Um, here's our code, but you also, when you fill that out, there's a school picker list that you can um, enter in um, our name or, and our state and we'll, we'll pop up on the list and you can find us that way. So the um, FAFSA is open and it's actually um, 2022, the, you'll, this group would be applying for the 2022-2023 FAFSA and that did open this, um, this October 1st. I can't believe October is over already. Um, and also I do, I always like to put in a plug for an organization called Edu Education Quest. So Education Quest is a nonprofit organization in the state of Nebraska that helps students find um, uh, financial resources to help pay for college. They also will help students and families fill out the FAFSA. So sometimes that form can get kind of confusing um, and there might be, you know, maybe um, circumstantial situations that are different from person to person, they are really, really knowledgeable on the FAFSA and how to answer those questions. Um, they do take appointments, but also just visiting their website is a great um, resource. On their website, they do have a um, scholarship portal where you can go in and log in and enter information. And then it essentially will share with you a list of potential scholarships that you might qualify for. So I definitely recommend that um, to students and families. Check that out. It's also a well-vetted list of scholarships. So they have determined that these scholarships are legitimate. So it's not maybe... Um, somebody just trying to gather your information or something, they are truly awarding um, scholarships to, um, to potential students. So great resource. I highly recommend that you check it out. All right, I am gonna hand things over to Sydney and she is gonna talk to you about um, our student support services. Um, so here in Nebraska Methodist, we're all about um, supporting students during their time here and making sure that they're as, as successful as they can be. So we do have a host of different things. Um, one of those is academic advising for that first semester or the first semester coming in, you're, you'll work mostly with Janet getting signed up and enrolled for your classes. And then we also have academic support services. And that office, they can help you with things like time management, um, testing strategy. If you have any testing anxiety, they can help you overcome that. Uh, we see that quite a bit here. And then we also do have tutoring. Uh, we have the one-on-one -on -one tutoring for students, but we also have um, something called supplemental instruction. Janet, can you tell them a little bit about um, what that looks like for students? Yeah, absolutely. So with our supplemental instruction, they, uh, we have two different professors on campus that teach anatomy and physiology, human anatomy and physiology, which is your, a required course in your first semester. And they work with a student instructor and the student instructor will provide extra instructions. So on a separate day outside of your class, and it's usually two days a week, 
the instructor who has worked with the professors will help you navigate through whatever lecture material you learn for that week and keep you on task. AMP is a very demanding course at Nebraska Methodist College, and we cover a lot of material in a 16 week semester. So we really encourage you guys to take advantage of the free tutoring that's offered and the free supplemental instruction to just kind of ensure your success with our program. Awesome. Uh, one of my favorite things too that we have here, it's called the Create Team. Um, a guy named Mark Billington helps run that. And they do a lot of stuff with the iPads. They have tons of cool apps on there to help students study. Um, so there's lots of different resources for you to take advantage of. Um, in addition, we have counseling services. We do have 24 seven campus security. So there's always someone around if you need anyone to walk you to your car um, or if you get locked out of student housing at all. We do have a library here on campus and then campus health services, which is um, that small student health fee. That's what that is for. It is a service offered to students in our 501 building just down the street, and they can help you out with um, any little illnesses like flu or colds. Um, they always recommend students to stop and they don't take quite as much advantage of them as they should. It is. It's a great resource. I've gone down just even if I've forgotten to take an allergy pill or um, something like that. They have over-the-counter meds available if you have a headache or whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great resource to keep our students healthy and um, ready to roll for classes and clinical. All right. I'm going to chat with you a little bit about um, just other opportunities that are available here at the college. So when we do this online, it's a little bit difficult to really showcase all the um, outside the classroom opportunities that we have, but we do really pride ourselves on making service learning and involvement opportunities available to our students. So um, this is just a list of some of the things that our students participate outside, outside of the classroom. So um, we have what's called the mobile diabetes unit, and that is this um, kind of RV looking thing right at the bottom of the screen here on the left-hand side. It's actually a clinic on wheels. So this is available um, and students will go out on the mobile diabetes unit, sometimes as a part of their courses, other times as a volunteer, and this is available to all majors. So for instance, some of the initiatives that they've helped out with is doing health screenings at maybe local homeless shelters in the area. They um, have assisted with administering COVID vaccinations. Um, the name Mobile Diabetes Unit, that's actually how it was founded to do diabetes screening. So that is also a, a major mission of the unit. But over the year, years, it has really grown into um, something much, much larger than that. So they'll send out periodic announcements asking for students if they want to volunteer and offer their services. It's just a really great way to give back to the community and also gain some additional patient care experience and healthcare experience and really um, put your, um, your uh, skills into practice on a um, volunteer basis. We participate in community health fairs, do, um, do lots of different service projects, um, there is a uh, pre COVID we had established an um, alumni mission trip. So this um, picture second from the bottom. This is our alumni mission trip to Jamaica. So that's something to look forward to as an alumni. There is a clinic that we partner with in a small village in Jamaica where we um, have taken alumni and faculty and they have participated and helped um, the community members of that village in providing um, different health services. So that's something that we can't wait to get reestablished once um, it's a little bit more safe to travel and whatnot. So there, there are different student academic clubs. If you decide to live in our campus housing, there um, is a housing association. We have a group called the Student Ambassadors. We also have a Student Government Association. Um, study abroad is available to all of our majors. Uh, since we are a healthcare college, what we do is we actually offer our study abroad trip um, in December, right after classes end, and they go for a, usually it's a, a little over two weeks, and they travel um, each year, it's a different country, um, and you go and you do some studying um, in the sense of you'll learn about what maybe healthcare looks like in that country, maybe visit a healthcare system um, wherever you might be, but then they also do fun stuff like 
touring and whatnot. So that's a, something that our students really look forward to. And um, we are excited to get that rolling again as well. Um, HOSA, if students who were active in HOSA in high school would like to continue that, we do have opportunities to continue to volunteer with that organization. And then we also offer a homecoming week and a welcome week. So our campus is just located right off of, um, it's a block north of Dodge Street for those of you who are familiar with Omaha and we're on the corner of 87th and Burt. So um, it's a just, just a step away from lots of things um, here in town, but um, we do offer campus housing. It's apartment style. So um, to, it's not required to live on campus, but it's absolutely available. Um, we have one and two part, two bedroom apartments available to our students. Um, we offer lots of comfy study and lounge spaces, so we really want to make sure that when students come to campus for the day, they have everything they need to stay. So if you have a class at eight o'clock and then maybe you don't have another one until 11, you know, you have everything you need, um, whether that be to study or hang out with friends or grab breakfast or lunch or whatever. We do have a chapel on campus, so we have a spiritual development group called Ignite, and they hold different um, things in the chapel, Bible studies, um, services, things of that nature. We have a coffee shop and a micro market. So um, during the day, if you want to come grab lunch, um, that is all also available in the evening. The micro market is open whenever the building is open. So that's available to our students. Our um, campus housing actually has a pool and that is available to all of our students. So I always say that's kind of a, be a best kept secret. Um, we have a sand volleyball court, a walking trail. Uh, we also um, have a community garden that our students have established. So that's something that um, kind of comes and goes years to year to year based on um, how involved the students are and the faculty. But it was definitely something that got resurrected in this last year and has been um, really, really fun for everybody to participate in. And last, we are renovating our and moving our wellness center. So we're moving it up to our main um, main building, and um, we're really excited for that. We were hoping it was going to be done in 2021. I think I'm going to have to update this slide because I think it's going to be in 2022. However, the group that is on this call and joining us in August, it will be done, and it's going to be really, really cool. So we're really excited for um, that to be available to our students. Okay, Cindy, do you want to walk us through some of our commonly asked questions? Yeah, so I'll push these off um, to either you or Janet, or I'll answer um, a few of them as well. Janet, um, do you want to take the first one? How soon will students expect to start clinical during the program? Sure, our students start clinical your second year. So you would start in August 2022. You would start clinical in August of 2023. Fantastic. Um, and then Megan, what are the health and compliance requirements? Great question. So as a healthcare college, our students do have a few additional health, um, health and um, compliance requirements that you might not see, um, you know, if you were maybe a history major or a business major at another school. So for instance, I mentioned the background check and the drug screen when I was talking about student fees. Um, all of our majors that have a clinical component are required to complete a drug screen and a background check prior to um, starting their program. So that's something that you would work with um, our Office of Student Engagement as well as our Campus Health Office and they help um, get all of that set up. Uh, we also have um, immunization and vaccination requirements that students are required to complete. Um, and that's another requirement to go into clinical. Uh, we are currently requiring the COVID vaccination as a part of that list. Um, and that's so that we can make sure that you can be guaranteed a clinical spot. So we wanna make sure that you can um, complete all the requirements necessary to graduate from your program and sit for your board exams. So um, a little bit different at times. I know students sometimes are a little bit surprised. When, oh, and like things like CPR and stuff like that. It's just um, not maybe something that you would have to do to go take a class at Metro or UNO. But um, when you're a healthcare major, there are some additional hoops that you have to jump through to make sure that you are ready to go for clinical and ready to um, be actively involved with your patients. Okay, and speaking of clinical, um, Janet, where are a few places that you've had students do clinical before? Okay, so we are very fortunate that we have clinical affiliations with all of our major uh, hospitals in the Omaha metro area. So we will go to clinical throughout the Methodist health system. 
We will also go to clinical through all of the CHI facilities. That would be Lakeside, Emanuel, Bergen. And we have uh, clinical affiliations with Nebraska Medicine. So that's the Med Center and uh, Bellevue Medical Center. We also have affiliations with the VA, with Boys Town Children's, uh, St. Elizabeth in Lincoln. We are affiliated with Fremont and Jenny Ed. They are part of the Methodist system. So we go there as well. And we have a clinical affiliation with a few of our smaller uh, specialty areas, Midwest Eye and Ortho Nebraska. Okay. Um, and another note I just want to tack on to the end of that is um, just make sure you do have a good mode of transportation for clinical uh, because you are responsible for your own transportation to get there. Mm -hmm. And then um, can students work while enrolled in the program? How, how many hours a week do you typically recommend? So students can work and I do realize that most of the students will be working. Uh, my recommendation for work hours would be around 24, that part-time. Um, we have some really intense, heavy semesters, and they start right away. Your very first semester in the program is what we call a pre-professional semester, and that's where you would take that anatomy and physiology class if you aren't transferring it in. That's a five credit class and demands a minimum of 15 hours of basically 15 hours of work a week to stay on task for that class. And that's just one class. So I do recognize that our students need to work, but I highly recommend that you do not carry a full-time load while you're going through the program. Give us 22 months and we'll get you through the program and then we can get you a full-time job. Awesome. A really good, good way to put it. And then um, how soon will students know their schedule here? So your schedule will kind of be based uh, as soon as you guys get your applications in and you get accepted into the program, I can give you a general idea of what that schedule looks like. That schedule will depend on any transfer credits you're bringing in and it will really be finalized when we start to register students in the summer uh, before your first fall session. So your first fall semester of 2022. Great. We, we will hold what we call care days and we hold those um, each at this um, prior to each semester. And those are essentially our version of new student registration. And they start um, usually the first week in June and they are held in June and July. And Janet will work with you to get that class schedule. Um, sometimes even prior to those those days. So um, that way, I always tell students, if you really, really are concerned about knowing, you know, what your class schedule is to be, make sure you sign up for one of those early care days, because then you, and then that, the early bird gets the worm on, on classes, if you have some arts and sciences and things like that, because those are the courses that have a little bit more flexibility of when they're offered and whatnot. Your search tech classes are all going to be offered same time. There isn't two sections of things. We have one section, um, since we have one cohort, so. And Megan, if we have students coming from outside of the state, is mm -hmm. there a care day offered for them too? Yes. So that is a great question. So we often do have students come from out, out of state and we recognize that it's probably not convenient to make two trips to Omaha. So um, we will have a, we always have a care, a care day the week before classes start. So the Monday before classes start, because we feel it is important for you to come and get settled in and spend that week getting to know Omaha and your surroundings and getting your books and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but we will also put you in touch with Janet prior to that. So if you want to chat over the phone or via, um, a, you know, a virtual means to um, get your schedule squared away, but the official like registration and everything um, will take place that, that week before. So um, we will absolutely work with you on that. Okay, and then I'll take this next question. Um, when should students submit an application? We did brush over this a little bit earlier, but I really do recommend to go off of our standard deadlines and our um, priority deadlines, which are December 6th and then February 1st. That's just to make sure you have the best chance at getting a seat in the program and then also um, those scholarships too. Mm -hmm. 
The other thing is too, we mentioned housing and housing actually, since you aren't required to live on campus, we do have enough housing for around a hundred students. So most of our students do commute, but this year was the first year where we had a wait list for housing. So we don't um, accept housing deposits until students are admitted and deposited. So if you are wanting to live on campus, that's another good reason to kind of get things squared away so you can secure um, uh, an apartment too, so. Um, and then Janet, we mentioned really high job placement. When students are going through clinical, um, what do you recommend for them to do to have a really good chance of getting hired by the time that they graduate? That's a great question. With our program, with the surgical technology program, we are very fortunate that the market is great for surge techs. We are not like other healthcare programs where their communities are saturated with a profession. We have job openings in every hospital, in every satellite clinic right now, and they want surge techs. So we talk to our students about clinical rotations as a job interview. It's a job interview and it gives you a chance. It goes both ways. You get a chance to interview the clinical site. They get a chance to interview you. And that way you can narrow it down when you start getting ready for graduation. Our students will be interviewed by the Methodist Health System as part of our affiliation with Methodist. So all of our students have the opportunity to go through an official interview. And our students are typically uh, searched out by the clinical sites starting in as early as January and February. And they get job offers that start rolling in by March. So our students have jobs waiting for them upon graduation. Uh, we are, we're in a really unique situation this year. We have eight students currently in clinical and those eight students, two of them have already received job offers. And I keep telling the sites guys, we don't graduate until May. So uh, those students are really excited and it's great, but it's hard to keep their focus at the same time. I bet that's, re that's really awesome though, because that is the goal at the end is to get hired. Um, and they're offering bonuses right now too, you said, which is always icing on top of the cake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and bonuses then, are uh, great. Definitely. Um, and then this is a question I get asked quite often, will my transfer credit shorten my plan of study? So we do accept transfer credit, like I mentioned before, you do have to meet those stipulations like a C or above, and it has to be from an accredited institution. It will lighten the load during some semesters for you, but because it is in a cohort lockstep style for this curriculum, it will not shorten your plan of study. So it is the same length for all students, regardless of transfer credit. You might just have a few semesters where your credits are a little bit less than they would be without coming in with some, some transfer credits. Yeah, that is a common question, but um, yeah, lightens your load, doesn't lessen your time. So, all right, all right. So those are, like we've mentioned, our commonly asked questions. So now is our time or is the time for any of our attendees to ask any questions that they might have. So as a reminder, we do have um, the chat feature and the Q&A button in your toolbar, and that is how you can submit any questions that you might, that might come to mind. So please feel free to um, submit those questions. Okay, it looks like we're getting some questions. So um, one of the questions that came in, is there an opportunity to complete a bachelor's degree after earning my associate degree. So there is, we have what's called a Bachelor of Science in Health Studies. It's a degree completion program that's built specifically for majors like this. So um, you would, uh, you would um, complete your associate degree in um, surgical technology. And then the really nice thing about that uh, degree is since it's a degree completion, a true degree completion program, you actually get a block, uh, a grouping of block credits where we kind of, we just take a big chunk of your um, surge tech credits and transfer it right in. So I always tell students if that's something that they are interested in, then, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me get that off. Um, then that is something that we, um, we can absolutely help them through and coach them through. 
So great question. All right, are there any other questions we can answer? So, um, okay, a question has come in about anatomy and physiology that we have a five credit anatomy and physiology class. Does that mean that they can transfer in a one, the, a one, one half of anatomy and physiology or do they need both classes? No, in order to transfer in anatomy and physiology, if you're taking it at a college or took it out of college that offers uh, AMP one in one semester and AMP two in a second semester, you will have to have completed both AMP one and two to transfer it in. The reason for that is our 16 week anatomy and physiology class takes AMP one and AMP two and puts it into one class. And that's what makes it a five credit class. Okay, yeah, that's something we commonly, commonly get asked. Okay, what is there any other questions that come to mind or Janet or Sydney, are there any questions that you commonly get asked? I usually get asked questions about a specific uniform. Do I have to purchase a uniform? Do I have to get, do I have to get specific shoes? Uh, for the surgical technology program, the simple answer to that is no. We do use scrubs. Uh, we use black scrubs, but it can be black scrubs from anywhere. And wherever you want to pick them up, uh, that's great. The, the cheaper you can find, the better. We use them in our labs, and you wouldn't need them until you start taking those search tech classes January of your first year. So you would start August, 2022. You wouldn't need your scrubs until January, 2023. As far as shoes, keep in mind, you're gonna be standing, so comfortable shoes, and they need to have a closed toe and they need to have a, a closed in heel on the backside so your foot doesn't slide out. That's for safety reasons, but you don't have to go out and buy a specific uniform and you don't have to go out and have specific shoes. Yeah, that is a common, I know we get that question a lot with nursing because there are specific scrubs for some of our majors. Um, some clinical, some majors have very, very um, specific uniform requirements. So that's great that there's a little bit more flexibility with our, our surge tech students. Yeah, when we go to clinical, we wear our scrubs, uh, just to make this clear everyone, we wear our scrubs when we are in lab on campus. When you go to clinical sites, you will wear your own clothes. Hospitals provide the laundered scrubs that you would put on when you go into the OR in each facility. So you'll never have to purchase scrubs to work in the OR. That's great to know. I didn't know that. So Janet, what qualities or characteristics make a good surge tech? Someone who loves to be hands-on with attention to detail. We are very hands-on. If you like to get in there and you like to work with instrumentation, you like to know how the body works and you just have this uh, you know, fascination with the OR uh, surgery, the human body, this is a great fit for you. If you're looking for more of that personal relationship with a patient and getting to know them and following them through their process in a healthcare facility, that's not what we do. Our relationships are built with the surgeons and the circulating nurses and the rooms and the anesthesia providers. And we become a kind of a family in the OR. So we are we're very hands-on, uh, we are very detail-oriented and we have a fascination, truly a fascination with how does the body work. So is it safe to say that surge techs usually work in a team of like the providers that you just mentioned consistently? We, depending on your facility, uh, you will work with a lot of the people on a regular basis. Uh, most hospitals have different teams and they get broken down by maybe surgery specialty. So you may, might be on a general surgery team or you might be on a cardiovascular team, neuro or orthopedics. And you'll get a core group of other surgical techs that you might work with on a regular basis, nurses that you'll do the same cases with. And then you would be working with those group of surgeons 
and, and getting to know those surgeons. Smaller facilities, everybody does everything. So you, you still work with the same people, but you'll do all, uh, multiple different specialties during the day. Okay. All right, well, it looks like that is the last of the questions that have come in. So with that, we'll go on to next steps. All right, so for those of you on the call, if um, what we chatted about this evening is something that you are interested in, we encourage you to contact admissions. Uh, Sydney, who is on the call tonight, is going to be your primary point of contact. And she's actually listed her Calendly link here. So that's how you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one visit directly with her. And that visit can be online or on campus, whatever um, is a better fit for you. We encourage you to start that application process and turn in your materials. And then also apply for any additional scholarships that we talked about, or maybe visit that Education Quest site that I mentioned to see if there's any external scholarships that might be a good fit. Uh, if you have any additional questions, we, you know, we really want to make sure that you get those questions answered. I always say that the really good questions come after we've, you know, hung up a call like this, or uh, maybe you've left the building. So don't be shy to um, contact us afterwards if something comes into play. For those of you who are listening to this via recording, same thing. Um, if you sparked some questions after watching this, or you have some um, additional needs that you would like us to address, we're happy to answer those questions that you have. But we are really excited that you joined us this evening and we really look forward to working with you and we um, wish you a good night. Thank you, everybody.